Hello there. So this week I am bringing the Bad Batch mock early. It is instead today on Monday rather than waiting till Wednesday. And honestly, it's also partly because I'm just so excited to show you this model. This tops anything I did for Ahsoka. And we will be comparing them later on in a few weeks time. But honestly, I am so in love with this mock. I cannot wait to show it off. But today I have designed an Imperial V-Wing from a little earlier on in the Bad Batch, but they do show up quite often. But the reason I have chosen earlier scene is I've picked when they were going to Sereno to recover some of Dooku's loot. And that means I could include two extra characters, Wilco and Rampart. Of course, Rampart's playing a big part up till recently. And because this is recorded before this week's Bad Batch, I still don't know what happens in the finale. So when the Bad Batch finale comes out, or even perhaps now, there's something you might want to see built in Lego from Bad Batch. Personally, I haven't seen any other creators do it. Let me know down in the comments and I will be choosing the top three comments and making them next week. If you do want to see your comment featured in next week's episode, alongside a shout out, I'll throw your comment up on screen for everyone to see. Definitely let me know down in the comments and I'll also probably do a community post. Go over to that and be sure to comment your ideas because I know there's a lot that I haven't touched on. And of course, I'm not expecting the finale to be too heavily introducing anything. So there's not going to be much room for mocks without taking the batch from previous mocks, which yes, are still mostly built. I will be doing a showcase at the end. So the finale might be this week, but next week there's more mocks. And then we've got a showcase where I will be comparing them to the Ahsoka series that I did when Ahsoka was coming out. But that's a long enough intro. Let's get straight to this build. And as you might have seen in yesterday's video, because it did feature, I had already built this yesterday. It was actually chilling just back there. So go back. I think there's a few seconds that you might be able to see it. This is my V-Wing. I guess it's a V-Wing playset. I did check out the prices for all these pieces, excluding the sand. And it is about £40 because of how complex these pieces are, but they are all fairly common pieces. So you can definitely get it a lot cheaper than that. But that puts it around the price point of the Spider Tank from Mando. Came with Mando, Bo, and Grogu. Now, Grogu we got a few times. Mando came with a Darksaber and it was a brand new Bo. So it makes sense to have a plain Phase 2 Clone Trooper. And then we've got our other two figures down here, Rampart and Wilco. You can see Wilco is using one of my 3D printed pauldrons there. It is still green. I can give you a better look at the back. But all I've done to recolor it rather than buying myself some brand new plastic is just color it in with a whiteboard pen. It's something that loads of people do for custom Lego. And as it's not an official Lego piece and I've made it myself, I'm really not fussed about colouring it in. Of course, the ideal thing would be to paint it, which perhaps would also lead for a more long-term approach. But I'm really liking the two figures down here. Of course, Rampart does end up killing Wilco, so perhaps they should have been distancing themselves the other side of the V-Wing. But I think this would be a great minifigure choice if we were to get it for a actual Lego playset, which is honestly what I went for here is... Definitely more complex than a normal Lego set should be. There's some 18 plus techniques in there. So if you are not a fan of some of the more complicated builds, this might not be for you. But it is up on Rebrickable, £1 for the instructions. And as I said, I'm pretty sure if you wanted to buy the pieces fresh, new, off Bricklink, it will set you back something like £40. Include the instructions and it is about £40. So... This would be probably a 40, 45 pound Lego playset. And I think value for money is definitely here. Now, it's not just a nice set to look at. Before we get to all the details, which I have included details that date back, well, like 50 years in Star Wars lore. But this V-Wing does actually have the wings that do rotate in. And I'm not sure if it will stay balanced on the stand. Yes, look at that. I didn't expect it to while I was recording. Normally that's something that just happens off camera, but the wings do go forward. I'm afraid they don't have a full 360. And as you can see, I am being very careful with this because the stand that I've got it on is just sort of balancing it. You might be able to see under there that it's not even clipped on properly. So I'll workshop a stand and if you really want a stand to go with it, 
I'll add instructions to a much more secure one on Rebrickable soon. But the wings go forward mainly for landing. You can balance it on the wings. I wouldn't recommend it because any sort of jog or any bouncy movement around it will just send it flying back because it is a back heavy model. So you might want to bulk up the front before you leave it laying around. Speaking of the front, you saw a quick view of the underside. I'm not going to show off too much because you'll probably be able just to build it yourself. But these wings are held on by two of the superhero poses you can see there's some just at the front there and there's also one at the back i think three four studs in there's another one holding it on and that is why it is really fragile now the wings don't bounce off if you were to smack them don't get me wrong if you tap this hard enough the whole ship will come off the stand but the thing that's keeping them on is actually this millennium falcon shape at the back i mean look at that that's a great micro scout millennium falcon there you just need the Extra slope at the top, uh, well, actually it'd be at the bottom, and that would be a cool falcon. But that is held on by an axle that goes the whole length of the ship. You can see right at the back there, this axle bar, a nine length axle bar, is pretty much the thing keeping the whole ship together. I'll see if I can get a focus shot on that bar, but... Once again, my camera isn't the best. I'm looking at improving it, and I think this is the best we're gonna get. You can also see the twin engines at the back, and I've included as much detail around here to get it looking like the official model. Now, thankfully for me, I was able to find a 3D model online. Well, I say 3D, it was more of just the one consistent dimension around this plane. So I've made sure I've got all the details as accurate as possible, like the little gap in this triangle at the back, which honestly, I really, really loved implementing. I've also got two fins on top. And in case you're not a fan of the Imperial model, you can definitely turn this into a Republic one by recoloring a few of the pieces. And right up here, you may see a stud. And that is for placing an Astromex head, because typically there does tend to be an Astromex on the back. I mean, the Imperials don't really do it. But if I quickly just take R2-D2 from Anakin's ETA, which is on the shelf above where I'm recording, you can place R2's head right at the back there. Remember to support the underside. And now you've got an astromech attached to your V-Wing. And it does look really, really cool. Again, you could build a fleet of these for many scenes throughout Clone Wars and now Bad Batch. But... As it is meant to be a Bad Batch mock, we'll take R2 off and I'll replace him later. Now we do have a regular clone in the front and the front of the V-Wing shuttle does slide forward. Now, this is not as big as Grievous Starfighter. There is no way I could implement a feature like that without reducing the stability of it. The clone doesn't wobble around in there. It is secure enough for that clone to be, even though they aren't studded on as you saw when he just Knocked to the side when I removed R2, but because it can't slide forward, instead I've got it lifting forward, much like all of the Deltas and the ETA. In fact, I think the ETA does lift up over the back, but much like my Delta Starfighters, instead of sliding forward, it's hinged at the front, so there is some accuracy. And also behind this clone trooper here, we have the blast up behind the seat. Now, I think V wings resemble A wings just a little bit. So I have taken this straight from the Splinter of the Minds book, the original sequel to A New Hope. If you haven't read that, it is quite a good read. And Luke stores his weapon. It's sort of under, below, at the back of his seat. And I think that's even where he charges his lightsaber hill. So I have stolen that from the book, more like borrowed it. And that is where the clone's blaster is stored. And to get it clipped down on the model so that you don't have a blaster rattling around, I've just included a one by one stud with a hole in the back and you don't have to put too much pressure on to stick it down. You just push it down lightly and the blaster is stored safely in the back. And just to show you how the trooper goes in, you don't clip him in or anything. You just put him on the two studs. And the thing I have the issue with is trying to close it without knocking the trooper to a side. You have to get him properly in the middle there, just like that. But yeah, it is quite a bit of fun trying to get the true part without his hand catching on the cockpit glass which is definitely something that you'll have to trial and error for getting your troopers in 
because as you can see, it's not an easy task. This is why I recommend this as more of an 18 plus set, but there we go. I finally did it. I thought for a moment I never would do it, but once again, you can balance the ship on its wings, but as I said, any sort of movement or wobble and that ship is straight away tipping to the back. So let's restore the wings to the typical stance you might see for a V-Wing. And once again, take a look at the set as a whole. We definitely need some more named troopers, which LEGO are slowly rolling out, but even characters like Wilco here, I don't know why we haven't got any Bad Batch Season 3 sets. They went ham on Clone Wars, and I'm pretty sure Bad Batch is just as popular, if not more popular than Clone Wars. I mean, Star Wars has touched a bigger audience now than it did around the time of Clone Wars, so there's got to be more people watching, if not just as many. So I'd love for LEGO to release a set like this, some sort of V-Wing, something that not only is for fans of the Bad Batch show, but also for fans of Clone Wars, for fans of the prequels and just that era generally. They could include a few different plates that we could switch out, much like a two-in-one, I guess. And yeah, it will ramp up the price, but then people will be buying double. They'll want an Imperial one. They'll want a few Republic ones. And I think, honestly, that is the way to go. Let me know what you think of my Rampart and Wilco down in the comments, as well as would you pick up this set if LEGO were to release something like this? Again, the instructions can be found on Rubricable if you don't want to wait for LEGO to make this set, because I very much doubt that they will. But... I am enjoying making all of my clone customs, so I have to get to printing the pauldrons and karmas in the correct colours and adding them to my minifigure display. I hope you do enjoy this video. If you did, a like would be greatly appreciated and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content as we are nearly approaching, well, we're nearly at 1k subs. Thank you all for the support and may the bricks be with you always.